Okay, welcome. I am going to go through a quick thing on Schoology for the 2021 school year and just talk about the high school expectations for Schoology. And you can see from my dashboard that I've got a few things on here. Distance learning, professional development, go into that course and we have set up several things that um, have a lot of information on them. The one I want you to click right now is Schoology. And Schoology has the Schoology basics. If you need some help on how to design an assessment or review the calendars, all of that is located there. Back out to Schoology's. Schoology organizing is what I want to talk to you about right now. And you see there's high school, middle school. Let's select high school. And once I'm in high school here, we're gonna click the high school template. We want all teachers to set up their courses in a similar manner, making it easier for students and teachers, well, students and parents to find things in Schoology, um, especially when they are distance, distance learning. So an example of um, a course, we're gonna use the Algebra 3 that we've modified a bit to to look like what we want it to, to be this year. Before we get that started, naming items in Schoology, I'm gonna click that open. I created this, it's just a discussion um, item that I've added to Schoology. And for our students, it would be helpful if we name the course in our assignments so that I say, if I'm working in Algebra 3, I'll label it Algebra 3, Quiz 1.3, and then um, maybe I was making an assignment, page 20. So that when it populates into the calendar, you're gonna see those courses in front of it. So I'm gonna go back out to my courses. Let's go to distance learning. And on the right side, you can see the calendar getting labeled here. So what I'm talking about is you can see how that's labeled Algebra 3 and homework submission. That just really helps that population in the calendar to show exactly what course things belong to. You can see here's an example that quiz one three, it does not have any label in front of it. So I don't know exactly what class 1.3 is. Um, so there's one thing we'd like you to do when you're naming items. So I'm gonna go back into Schoology organizing and high school, high school template getting back to where I should have been. So that was about naming items. The other useful thing would be to embed or put it in the description when you do a video, put it in the description how long the video is. Um, students and parents would kind of like to know that information. Maybe they're trying to organize their time um, and they have a half hour before lunch. So they they can do a video that's 17 minutes if they can see that it's a 17 minute, but maybe hold off on one that's a little longer. So if we all do that, that should help our students. Back out to template. Now, I'm gonna go into the example course, Algebra 3 course, and you can too if you're following along. Um, there is a welcome folder. We'd like everybody to add a welcome folder to their course and put in things that are pertinent to your course or very important, such as the syllabus. That'd be a quick way kids can get to their syllabus. Maybe their classroom, your classroom expectations. Maybe how do I upload um, assignments in this course? And you could do a quick video and maybe pop that in there. Just a nice reference place for our students. Okay, so I'm gonna go back out a level. And then you see that the next folder is the calendar folder. Now, last year we said everybody had to have a calendar. And this year we're saying it's optional. That seems strange, doesn't it? The reason being is because we're gonna utilize more of the right-hand side where the calendar is sitting with all the items because we'll populate that with assignments, discussions, events, tests and quizzes, things like that. So that's gonna populate a little bit more clearly this year than in the past. Oops, I gotta go down a level now. Um, bear with me, getting there. So calendars will be optional this year and use them if you have them. I think they're a nice instructional tool for the kids 
they get to see maybe a little bit larger picture and just focused in on that class. Um, we added three examples of calendars that um, were very common last year. A lot of people used just a Google calendar and then they embedded the link. You do this through a page. So this is an add materials at a page and then you can link your Google um, URL in there. The other thing you could do a Google Docs and some people did that like they had their calendar laid out on a Google Docs and it was dynamic because you could go into Google Docs, change things or add the next week and it just stayed live with the kids when they accessed your Google Doc calendar. The last one that is an example is a PDF and some some teachers hand out the month, you know, a copy of the month at a glance and that's a nice little PDF. It's static, not quite as dynamic and you'd have to change it and upload again if you made changes to that calendar. But those are all optional pieces that you may do just to help direct your kids a little bit more. The next items you see there are four folders and I have date ranges in the front end. We want everybody to date range things so that it makes it very quick for students to be able to jump into the right folder. Maybe I was gone September 10th. Well, now I can clearly see I should go into that red folder because that's where the class is working from September 8th to September 18th. So in math, a lot of things are done by chapters. And so that's how I've organized this course. And um, Algebra 3 has chapter 1, which is the real number system, running from September 8th to the 18th. Once I go into that folder, you'll notice there's some subfolders. Um, and I've identified two weeks that we're going to be on. Uh, chapter one. And in week one, I have date ranges September 8th to September 11th. So if I was gone September 10th, this is where I should go to find well, what was being done in class. And then within that, I design another sublevel of folders. Now I'm into the daily folders. So I've got September 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th for this four-day uh, school week. Once I'm into that folder, you're even going to see all the detail then that was done in class on that particular day. I have my video link with the um, minutes listed in that in that header. I also have Algebra 3 noted in the description. I have a homework key that's uploaded but unpublished. I could publish it if I were ready for students to see my answer key. Um, and then I have a spot for them to do their submission work. And I'm going to have them upload a PDF as described in that um, little block there. So that was the September 8th day. And then September 9th kind of has the same information. Oops. And so forth. So labeling it clearly and then putting everything that's due inside your folders so that it populates the calendar. And that's the reason we're making calendars optional this year is because we're going to be utilizing Schoology vastly more than we've ever done before. Um, assignments, events, everything that you do in your class um, that needs a response from the kids should be put on Schoology as some sort of assignment or link that will populate the calendar. You can also just create events for calendars and then it will it will embed into the calendar. So that's what we're after. We want these sublevels. Um, the welcome folder is a must. And then your unit folders with dates. So these are larger dates. And then a subfolder, or if your unit maybe is only four days, maybe you would choose just to have folder for day one, day two, day three, day four, such as September 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th. Um, so do what works for, for your situation, but remember some dates. All right, that's about all I have. Have a great day.